Dr. Rashna Kulkarni, welcome to ITV Gold. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thank you, Aditi. Always a pleasure to be here. And it's always a pleasure to have you here. Let's go right into it, Doctor. I have a lot of questions for you. So let's begin this with looking at what is happening with cases and deaths across the nation. Now, we're hearing the hotspot states, which were in South and the Midwest, are starting to do better. But then yes. we're hearing the states here in the North, where we are all at, is starting to kind of, you know, see high increased numbers of cases. So my question to you is, how much trouble are we in in the Northeast? And how are you looking at these case and death trends? Sure, Aditi. The um, United States has recorded now uh, 45 million coronavirus cases, uh, coronavirus infections. Yes which is the most in the world. And unfortunately, more than 737,000 people have succumbed to coronavirus, which is a very sobering statistics. Uh, fortunately, there is good news that we have seen since uh, this in September when we had the spike uh, because of the very contagious Delta variant. And uh, now we are seeing uh, almost a 60% drop as the vaccination rates are going up and uh, more and more people are getting vaccinated. We have seen a significant drop, uh, almost 60% across the United States. However, we are seeing some spike now uh, in the northern states because colder temperature are getting more people indoors. Uh, so we are going to see that. Hopefully, uh, people wearing masks and as more and more people are going, getting vaccinated and getting booster doses, uh, it's going to be less and it's going to be a lot more contained than what we had in 2020. So you are hopeful about this winter? I certainly am because we have seen as clinicians that uh, when people uh, mask themselves and when people are taking precautions, we saw a lot less flu. Uh, yeah. I hope people get vaccinated with COVID and people get their flu shots yeah. so that uh, we don't have uh, such uh, a typical flu season, which can result in a lot of hospitalizations and a lot of ICU admissions. Yeah. So important. Let's now talk about the biggest news of the week, Dr. Kulkarni. The FDA has voted to recommend a lower dose, a one third of the dose of the COVID vaccine of Pfizer for children ages five to 11. Huge yes. news. It can be a game changer um, in COVID vaccinations in the country. How are you looking at it? Do you agree with the recommendation? And following that, my question has to be about myocarditis. Every mm -hmm. parent in this country is worried about that. Give us a little insight. Of course. So uh, at this point, the way it stands that FDA is recommending all children over the age of 12 to be vaccinated uh, and which is a very strong recommendation but then just i think it was yesterday yes. that um, fda recommended that children 5 to 11 also should be vaccinated and that we don't have a cdc recommendation yet but i expect it to be there shortly and i do support that uh, because we have seen now, initially we thought that children are spared from coronavirus, but over the last few months, we have noted that there is significant amount of kids who had coronavirus, and not just that, a lot of kids needed hospitalization and then ICU admission, and unfortunately, several thousand kids died of multi-organ failure. So this is not a disease or infection that spares children. And that's what uh, led to this study and recommendation. And I do support it. Right. So let's now go into the issues that we're seeing from parents. Uh, myocarditis, it's a heart inflammation. Um, we have heard cases of children getting it after getting the COVID-19 vaccine. My question to you is a two-part question. Why is this happening? And what is it doing to the body? And following that, what do you say to the parents now? Sure. Great question, Aditi, because this is on everybody's mind. And as a parent, it would be on my mind as well. But 
let's know the facts about that. Myocarditis and pericarditis has been noted in kids, especially in adolescent male pa patients after getting the mRNA vaccine. It is typically seen after the second dose and it is thought to be because of the immune reaction that is precipitated by the second booster dose where we have a surge in the immunity. And sometimes this becomes an autoimmune response and the body sets out autoimmune response sometimes which can affect the heart. It's extremely rare. Uh, the chances of that are one in, I believe, one in 10,000. Good news, however, is that it's a fairly contained inflammation. And if kids get inflamed, inflammation with myocarditis or pericarditis, which is the sac that holds the heart, it's the covering that holds the heart. So myocarditis and pericarditis are both uh, conditions that can happen. However, uh, with anti-inflammatory and rests, it gets better and uh, people can go back and uh, to their regular activities and people can be recovered very quickly mm -hmm. with this. So it's a self-contained disease. Second thing is, let's not forget long-term effects of COVID infection itself, uh, not just on the heart muscle, but also arrhythmias, clots, uh, neurologic disorders, so all of that. And we have to weigh that. Uh, and I would suggest to all the parents to weigh the risks and benefits, and I still believe, and this is the recommendation from American Association of Pediatrics and CDC, that they still recommend uh, a COVID-19 vaccination for all the kids as chances of myocarditis are very, very small. It's treatable. However, COVID infection can be a lot more serious issue. So just following up to that, doctor, I'd just like to know quickly, why mm -hmm. uh, recommend one third of the dose of the COVID vaccine? Is that the normal recommendation for children that age group usually with vaccines? Yes, a lot of times it's adjusted by body weight. Okay, cool. So let's now go into more about COVID-19 vaccines and what's happening with the booster dose, doctor. Obviously, the third dose has been given out across the country to people that are eligible for it right now. Right. My first question to you on that, how are you looking at this booster dose? And should everyone in this country by the end of this year have received this booster dose? How important is that? A booster dose is extremely important. And this is not a novel concept for just this vaccine or this infection. A lot of vaccinations need two to three doses. Um, hepatitis and many other vaccines, which we have accepted. Uh, and that has become the norm, that has become the regimen. This vaccine should be no different. Uh, it, I expect two to three um, doses and sometimes this it's very likely that this could be a yearly vaccine for us it's it's very likely that our immunity starts waning after six months and hence getting a booster is very important everyone fda has just broadened their recommendations about vaccination and anyone who has any underlying medical condition or they think they are in high risk anyone over age of 65, they all should be vaccinated. So in my opinion, if one wants to get vaccinated, one certainly will have opportunity to get vaccinated. And even uh, there is now FDA uh, has approved even a mix and match uh, option, which is wonderful if people are getting, if they have gotten a J and J vaccine or a Moderna vaccine, they now do have an option of getting either of that because there is definitely a train of thought that that kind of mixing and matching can sometimes augment immune response. Hmm. Okay, so so there is no danger right now, doctor, in mixing and matching these doses. Absolutely not. Oh wow, that's very interesting. You know, and one more question I have to ask you on this. Have you been able to have access to getting this booster dose? And what about the other healthcare workers that you work with? 
um, have they had that access? Most healthcare workers by now have gotten or should have gotten uh, a booster dose now. I certainly have gotten mine, tolerated it just fine. No side effects, no complications. Wow. You know, just talking more about these booster dose, another news that came out this week was a recommendation that's kind of coming from the FDA, which says highly immunocompromised people may need fourth dose of the COVID-19 vaccine six months after their third inoculation. Please give yeah. me your comments on this. Yes, and I agree with that because as if a person is immunocompromised uh, by either the medical conditions or by the medications that they are on, their immunity is reduced and hence a fourth dose may offer a protection to them in six months. So I don't see any harm in it. And I think it's a very safe and very effective vaccine and people need to weigh the risks and benefits. And I think here, especially in this case, the benefits far, far outweigh the risk. Dr. Kulkarni, what are you hearing in the medical community about this? Is this a vaccine that we are going to be administering every six months? Um, how is the medical community sort of evaluating this? The medical community and the knowledge about this vaccine is still, we are learning about it as we go. Uh, and. Uh, the medical community at this time thinks that this is going to be a yearly vaccine for sure. Okay. And possibly in the medical community, maybe a bi-yearly. Okay, so this fourth dose is only for very specific people. The public may not need it. That's what you're trying to say. Correct. Okay, great. Now let's talk about vaccine mandates. You know, we are in the state of New Jersey, doctor. There are several vaccine mandates spread throughout the state. Governor Murphy really recommended that. We have seen vaccine mandates on the federal level. My question to you is how important is it for us to mandate these vaccines? And when you look at other political leaders that have politicized vaccine mandates and are banning them in their states, how dangerous could that get? I have said this on this show, Aditi, before, that vaccines, masks, and science should not be politicized. This is playing with fire. This can play with people's lives. And people, especially politicians, have to be really, really careful about what they're saying. In my opinion, vaccination, listening to science is crucial. People should do that. Listen to science get vaccinated that's how life expectancy all over the world has gone up childhood mortality has been reduced by vaccination and you know this is to me as clear as daylight hmm. yes and these things should not be politicized everyone should get vaccinated i think vaccine mandates are important I fully support vaccine mandates in any healthcare facilities. In my opinion, even in schools, hmm. vaccines should be mandated. Uh, yeah. And when you are talking about schools, doctor, I would like to know how are you looking at masks for children? Um, again, that's being politicized. There are many states that are in which even parents are somehow protesting against mask mandates. How does that make you feel as a medical professional? <laughs> it makes me feel disheartened and even angry. Uh, we should listen to CDC guidelines, which clearly states that anyone over the age of two, regardless of vaccination status, should be using masks. Kids should use masks when they are uh, interacting with anyone outside of their family. We have to protect these children until they are vaccinated. Uh, kids should be wearing masks. And at this point, we need to listen to science and CDC recommendations. To me, it's not a point to be disputed. Yeah, listen it to the science. Yes, yeah. science. So important. Two more questions for you, doctor. Um, I would like to have your personal perspective on how do you think the Biden administration is doing with vaccines right now? What do you have to say about their programs and what do you think they can do better? 
I do believe that they have done a much better job as compared to previous administration as far as the vaccine awareness and promoting the vaccine. Even booster shots they are promoting and I think they are doing a good job. My personal opinion, and again, it's personal, this should be across the country. It should not be left to pocket states, counties. This is a countrywide problem. And it should be done, these mandates should not be left to local authorities. Yeah. I have heard of a state in Arizona, I was just traveling there, that one county said no masks in school. Another county is saying masks. And so people, they, as soon as they cross the county lines, uh, recommendations change. And I think, I think that's not the right way to handle it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that perspective, doctor. My final question to you has to be, I'd like a prediction from you for the next month. If people get their booster shots, I think we should continue to see a declining trend. My concerns are, I hope people get their flu shots because let's not forget that the symptoms of flu and coronavirus are very similar. It leads to a panic. So if people can get their flu shots and can, can uh, follow precautions, still a little bit of social distancing, uh, masking when you are not sure uh, if you know your surroundings or people you know, uh, it will be a good idea to do that so that we can, as the winter comes, if we can overcome this winter, and I'm hopeful about that, yeah. I think we may see in 2022 coronavirus in our rear view mirror, and I can't wait for that date. I can't either, and I cannot imagine how you must be feeling because you've been treating these patients and probably one of the hardest cases since you are a cardiologist, so you're not seeing easy patients with no. COVID. Everything yeah. is an emergency, and I have to say one last thing, uh, Aditi. My salute and uh, to all these healthcare workers, all the frontline workers who have worked almost for a year and a half now in this pandemic. It's exhausting mentally as well as physically. So really my salute to all healthcare workers. Well, thank you for the service you're also doing, Dr. Kulkarni. Oh, you're both welcome, dear. It's, we are all in it together and we are going to overcome it together. I hope so. Thank you so much for your time today on ITV Gold.